Hello, and welcome to the Building Interactive Data Visualizations with D3JS video course by Pact Publishing. I'm Michael Westbay, your host and guide for this video course. This video course was put together by Alexander Simos and I. Alexander is a programmer working directly at the intersecting fields of data science and data visualization. He has used D3 for many projects of his own, as well as for the creation of an open source charting library called D3+. My background is in computer science, with an emphasis on databases, spending most of the past 20 years connecting databases to web technologies. We'll start off in Section 1 by setting up a development environment in which we can run D3, including the obligatory Hello World script. After working in the browser's interactive console to get a feel of the difference between elements and nodes, we'll conclude the first section by demonstrating the difference between driving a document in raw JavaScript compared with D3. With manipulating the DOM, document object model, out of the way, section 2 takes us through the steps of planning a page, creating a data structure, and having D3 drive the creation of the page from its data. It's all about data-driven documents. In Section 3, we learn about SVG, Scalar Vector Graphics, and how to draw on the canvas using both raw JavaScript and D3. Once we have drawing on the SVG canvas down, Section 4 introduces us to drawing a simple bar chart with SVG rectangles and random data. Section 5 features a scatterplot graph, complete with axes and labels alongside the data points, where the data is fetched from an external server's dynamic API. Now we're cooking with fire! We then take our scatter plot from Section 5 and add interactivity in Section 6. We learn how to handle user events, update our data with a new query, and, in Section 7, animate the changes in our graph, including literally dropping data points that no longer exist. In Section 8, we build a choropleth, that is, a world map using shading to indicate the quantity of exports for a given country. To accomplish this, we go from fetching and preparing the map data set through to zooming, tooltips, and building a legend. Finally, Section 9 puts everything together that we've learned by creating a geoscatter plot, that is, a scatter plot graph where the points are made up of country shapes of similar size. The graph is fully interactive, allowing the user to specify the year and export product for each axis, as well as get details from a tooltip by hovering over a given country. That's a great deal to cover, so let's get started!